We want to see the horse in walk and trot in hand with a saddle on board to see what they're doing with their saddle when they're moving and then we want to see them ridden as well because all of those variables change what might be happening to pressure underneath the saddle. So if I show you two different trees this will give you a really good idea as to what can happen. So I told you before that tree shapes can change longitudinally as well. So we can have the arc of the tree being very different. We can have very flat trees, we can have curvy trees, and we can have everything in between. Let me show you this on Jasper. See if we can get him to stand up. Oh, he's going to move away from me now. So if you have a little look at this tree shape, you can see, well, laterally we've got a little bit of um, space here for him. Longitudinally, it's a relatively flat tree. Now he's an A-frame pitch horse, and this is a relatively flat tree laterally, which is one of the reasons why you can see a little bit of uh, a gap here. But just get a bit of an idea as to how this sits on him, and I'll give it a bit of a wiggle, and I can't make that rock at all. If I put this tree on him, now have a little look. Can you see how much this saddle is lifting at the back edge here? Now I've got a lot of rock, so we've got a rotation point down at the base of the wither. This is actually quite a curvy tree. Now when we think about saddle design, I want to think about the tree being like the skeletal structure of the saddle. That tree has to match the horse's back profile and his dynamic profile, what he looks like when he's in movement. And we'll do a belly lift and show you how much his back shape can change. The panels that go underneath are there to provide shock absorbency and a little bit of balance change from front to back because as we described before, we could have horses that are downhill built, flat uphill. They can have the same longitudinal arc, they can have you know, say we've got a flat back horse, so the tree arc will be the same, but the panels are going to enable the balance of the seat to be correct. Let's have a quick look at Jasper in his, in his back lift. So at the moment he's in static. He's also asleep, so he may not like me doing a little bit of belly lift here. But let's have a little look and see if we can get him to do a belly lift and see what happens to his back. Good boy. Oh, look at that. Good man. Oh, you're very clever. He says, don't do that too much. <laughs> when a horse is actually in dynamic movement, they can really lift up. Not only can they come up through the thoracic sling, but they can come up through the lower thoracic and lumbar region as well. Their back profile changes enormously. So number five is head length. Come here, Jasper. Let's move forward a little bit, dude. Good boy. So this is the length of the tree this way and pretty much it has to do not only with the way the tree is designed but also how the seat is webbed up for the horse or for the rider. So ideally when we're talking about weight distribution in order to get that weight distributed as evenly as we can from front to back for the optimal amount of time so we're not getting massive increases of pressure in any specific area we aim to get the rider's weight towards the base of the wither. We want to get basically 50% of the rider's weight distribution in front of the base of the wither and 50% behind. 